Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Aries. This lovely chain was sent to me by Tila Craft here in Lagos. The plastic chain, I actually put a link in the description if you want to order it from AliExpress. For the other um, accessories that we're using for this tutorial, this is the magnets that I'm using. And for our stiffeners, it's actually cellulose board and chip board. The white one is the chip board. The pink one with the Okitex is the cellulose board. And this is the um, measurements that you guys are going to be using for this tutorial. And you can actually download from the link in the description. So we are using this lush, gorgeous shade of pink, both in smooth and textured. To give it a little more pop, I am using orange and yellow. And with all our pieces together, let's start gumming. So if you've seen my other tutorials, you know what's about to go down. I just decided to stick to the basics here while we just sort of improved our detailing. So I am using Evo Stick or contact adhesive. Ad adhesive. What is wrong with me? So I'm just going to put it on all our pre-cut pieces, both on the stiffeners and the synthetic um, leather itself. So I'm just sort of rushing through this because I don't want to waste a lot of time in the setup before we move into the main thing, which is how we arrange all the different panels to come up with the gorgeous design of the bag. So the only thing I didn't put in stiffener is the yellow and that's because I just wanted to use it to sort of outline the orange piece. But now that we have all our pieces joined with them to the stiffeners, we can now start um, folding all the edges before layering everything. So this is the only one I didn't cover all the way because I didn't want it to be too bulky. So the lines here just sort of indicate the borders for the top and where I'm just going to sort of lay the rest on. So from the edge to the dash line was actually 10 centimeter. Let me just say it here. Everything is in the measurement page. You don't have to worry about me missing anything. Any dimension you need is in the measurement page. So just go to the description and you can download it. I can also check for the other um, tutorials I've done in the past. I also sort of just put everything together in a folder. Okay, so this is the go <laughs> this is going to be the front piece. I don't know what to say. You guys are just seeing what I'm doing. I'm basically just wrapping everything together. So we're just going to watch through the wrapping process if this is like my first tutorial i've seen though this is how i actually wrap all my stops i like to make sure all the corners are really tucked in before i now trim off any excess i think i should say that for people that just see my tutorial for the first time but if you have been watching my videos you know i don't have to explain this you already know what i'm doing this is me just joining the leather materials or rather the synthetic leather materials to the stiffeners so i like to use chipboard for the sides for obvious reasons they are pretty solid but they are also really soft and they are flexible so when you want to make a gusset it's always the best choice so the dimension for this one is on the measurement page as i said before so i'm just going to wrap everything except for one part of the end which i'm going to sort of like tuck into the back so you only have to wrap the three corners and just leave one end open so first is outlining the orange i tried this without the yellow it was it wasn't that bad but i felt it needed more so i'm going to use this yellow strip to sort of outline the outer part of the orange to just give it like a really nice pop of color all right so i'm just going to put contact adhesive on everything before i start putting the pieces together Okay, so after putting our contact adhesive, you can see how I am just sort of carefully running it along the sides. You can only leave out about five millimeter. Anything more than that is going to make it look weird since it's more of a detail rather than a functional thing. So you want to leave out as little as possible. So after um, folding the edges like this, then you go back and you trim it so you don't want to have to sew through a part of your design that is too thick. So I'm just going to cut off this little notch on the end and I'm doing the same thing for the two sides so it's really uniform. It doesn't really have to join in the middle because our pink um, strip, our pink strap, our thick piece of pink band or whatever you call it is basically going to cover the middle part. So you're just focusing on the sides here. So you just sort of centralize it. There's no formula for this. If you cut the actual measurement, it's going to still look like this. 
so i'm just going to press it down a bit before taking it to the sewing machine here i am using my cylinder bed industrial sewing machine to sew it for this kind of um tutorial though i am really sorry you're going to need an industrial machine because the thing got really thick at a point i was even worried that the whole thing was going to flop so at this point i was going to join the pink as you see the um the carrier board did not get all the way to the tip or uh, to the edge so that when you fold it in it's not that bad so here i now realize that i forgot to put in the d-rings i didn't even mention them in, in the beginning part i don't know i was so exhausted this day but i was able to loosen it a bit and just use this um tool it's called a bone folder this is not the main function but i wanted something that wouldn't like prick or tear the pink leather so i'm just sort of going to get like a little piece of yellow and obviously i'm using yellow so that it will make sense when it's sort of sticking out from the side it looks intentional it doesn't look like it's a mistake so this is how the d-rings are going to be placed and i'm just going to take it back to the sewing machine and re-sew those areas just make sure you align it to the top 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 of your bag so off camera i already sewed down the pink side so your flap should look like this i mean this thing was so thick at this point but me i'm very stubborn so i stuck to the end i'm like i don't care i'm going to finish this bag i'm not going to give up <laughs> people need to see my work so i'm just putting this um piece of pink on the back part of it so this thing has two functions one is to reduce the bulkiness of the outer part of the bag as you can tell there's already a lot going on in the front so I didn't want it to go all the way to the back. So the only way I could do this was have a material like this, just sort of cover it. And because I was going to put like a back pocket, so I needed to reduce the thickness of whatever it is I was trying to achieve here. So after that, then I now turned it down, then I sewed it. Then after sewing, before and I came back and I started putting my contact adhesive. I mean, you can gum it before you sew, but I just like to be careful. So I like it when I have as many chances as possible to correct my errors. So this is what it's going to look like in the back right before I go in and I put the back pocket on. So I'm going to trim out any excesses. I always have this bad habit of leaving excessive allowance. I, I, I like it when there's always a way out. So I already wrapped the back piece itself. I think I used carry board. I can't even remember. So carry board or cheap board works for this um, back pocket too. You just wrap it and you use the line in the inner part. So after putting gum, I sort of just laid it flat on this and I took it back to the sewing machine for stitching. So now we're going to start building the side pieces. The side is called the gusset of the bag and this um, pattern is different. I don't think I've done a lot of tutorials with this type of um, side piece. I don't think I have. I'm trying to remember. I think apart from the Ankara bag where you can watch. Okay, you can click this link to check out that tutorial too. So it's a very similar type of gusset. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gumming the lining first. I think I have two methods of doing this but I think I prefer this one because it's a small piece. So I'm just going to gum all three pieces before taking it to the sewing machine. So first, I'm going to clip the top, which is where the lining and the um, leather is together before I now go to the bottom where I now join the bottom piece. And this is how you actually clip it before sewing. And I'm doing the same thing for the other one. I just want to clip as much as possible so I don't have to go back and forth on the sewing machine like it's it gets really exhausting sometimes so i clip as much as possible and i sew everything once so here i'm sewing the upper part of the side piece if you actually wanted to put like a d-ring on the side instead of the top of the bag you do it before this stage after this it's too late it's not going to look neat so i'm just going to sew this two sides first before joining the bottom pieces together And don't forget to backstage. All right, so I'm just showing this as a bonus thing, how to change the bobbin for a cylinder bed. I don't know who wants to see this, but just in case you're curious, this is how you change it. And obviously, because I couldn't use black thread for the bottom side, so I had to change to pink. 
and um, another bonus tip is when you are starting don't forget to backstage someone complained um, a while ago that she noticed her work was unraveling and i'm like it's probably because you're not backstitching properly or you're not even backstitching at all the stitches are tight too but after a while they tend to unravel especially when you don't backstitch so it doesn't matter if you have to raise the whole foot go back and find the right hole to start with always backstage so that your bag does not start loosening so this is our side and we are done with this so now we can go back to the main piece and finish that then start closing so now that we have our main piece complete it's time to fold the side so off camera i already added contact adhesive and i let it breathe a bit so i'm just going to go around and fold all four sides you can tell by looking at this that it's already super thick i mean i was able to sew it with my sewing machine because it was an industrial type but if you're using a domestic you may have to use something like chipboard instead of this cellulose board or carry board that people that's what people call it here in nigeria they call it carry board so this is our main piece i'm just trying not to panic at this point you could really tell that i was questioning my choices <laughs> but i stood my ground okay so now we want to put the inner part in so normally if you've seen my other tutorials too you would notice that there's a difference in this i think this is the first time i'm doing this in a tutorial so far which is you want to sew the under part of your flap okay the flap and the top of the back but you don't want it to just be ordinary fabric you want it to have a very neat and like real structured finish so this is what you do here it's 18 by 18 centimeter i just sort of wrapped halfway so the part that has the um, chipboard is going to be under the flap then the other part is just going to be inside the bag so i had to switch this too because the bag was already getting too thick and i didn't want to make it worse by now adding another layer of synthetic material so we're just going to quickly um attach the magnets or snaps like some people call it before we go on to close the back of this one and even to glue the main piece itself so you get to choose how high you want your magnets to be there's no formula for this i like to give people creative freedom to do whatever they want so i wanted mine low but not too low i don't know if you understand so that i can still sort of get a good grip if i want to open the purse so because this is going to be inner part of the flap that is why i'm fixing it on this obviously i mean it's common sense at this point so don't forget to put your washers this is what really prevents the back of the um, magnet from tearing out your stuff <laughs> so i'm just going to quickly sew that part while i join the under part of the flap to the main piece itself i mean at this point i was a lot less worried because i was like oh yeah this looks like it can actually come through i was really hopeful at this point i'm like i don't care i am going to bend you to my will <laughs> all right as you can see we have um a little extra fabric hanging out so the usual thing when i am gumming my fabric is that i like to put the gum on just one side put like a really generous amount sort of let it breathe for like a few seconds then just rub the fabric in you don't want it to be too dry so that the fabric can sort of absorb some of that too and because it's not dry it doesn't really mean you should worry about it it's still going to dry through the fabric because the fabric is breathable so as usual i go with my scissors with my diagonal method and i trim out every extra fabric hanging out if you want to cut the exact amount it's really up to you but i like i like a very wide safety net which is having a lot of allowance so it's not a mistake it's intentional and the type of um, lining we use here i don't know if i've said this before it's sort of like a velvet type of thing and it has this very lush feel so now we start closing so these are binder clips i don't know i don't like gluing this sometimes some people could use a double-sided tape that also works too but I i've never seen that in lagos nigeria so if you have put that in the comment section where we could find some double-sided tape but till then i'm using my binder clips for my closing of my bag so i'm just going to do that all round for one side 
then after sewing it down i didn't even know that was what i did in this video i'm just gonna come back and clip the main part to the um gusset of it i don't know what this type of gusset is called i know it's like the second most common one though but yeah it's all oh, it looks very good and this type of gusset you can even use like a flat bed to sew it it usually allows for more freedom when you're sewing so now let's take this to the sewing machine before we wrap up our tutorial All right, so um, personally, I really like this concept of design. I know it, it, it's not like a 10 over 10, but I think I really tried my best. And for a first attempt, it's not so bad. What do you guys think of this purse? If we should explore this type of design and maybe see how we can actually make it easier for people to make it without less with less force first say without less force <laughs> with less struggle so put your ideas in the comment section if you want to see this type of thing in different colors or even in different types of bags let me know what you think about this type of design let me know what you think about the color choice at first i was like Oof, it's too much but after a while i was like ah, it kind of works i mean it has like a summer vibe like a katy perry type of thing going on with it so i kind of like the concept it's not the neatest you could tell that there was a lot of struggle with the thickness of the bag and all so you guys should share your ideas in the comment section and i'd like to get feedback on what you think about this thing in full so thank you for watching my tutorial thank you for watching this video thank you for visiting my channel i really hope to see more of you guys in my other videos don't forget to like and subscribe this is aries atelier thanks for watching my video stay blessed and have the time